For today's EMN5, we're going to talk about patient presentations and specifically geared towards medical students and residents. Now, there's a lot of components to this presentation, but as with any presentation you give, your listener's attention is going to be best at the beginning and at the end. And even though this is only supposed to be two to three minutes long, I want you to make sure to emphasize that part, the HPI at the beginning and the assessment plan at the end. And that also happens to correlate with the parts that I think are most important. Okay, so let's start off with the HPI. Now the first sentence out of your mouth, I want it to be a killer first line. It should draw your listener in, set the scene, and in this case, give me tons of important information and a really concise statement. So for example, you could say, Mrs. Smith is a 56-year-old female with shortness of breath for a week. Or you could say, Mrs. Smith is a 56-year-old female with history of CAD with stents on Plavix, CHF with an EF of 30% on Lasix, and mild asthma, here with one week of slowly worsening shortness of breath and bilateral lower extremity edema. Now that is a killer first line. Next, I want you to add another sentence or two that gives some additional information about your chief complaint. And you can use this mnemonic, the old CARTS mnemonic, to give more of a description about the location, the timeline, severity, treatments tried, etc. So for example, in our patient with a shortness of breath, I might add, it came on slowly over the last week, becoming more severe, and it's worse when she lies down at night and with walking. She used to be able to walk one block, and now she gets short of breath just walking to the bathroom. She did take an extra dose of Lasix yesterday, which helped a little bit, and some albuterol that did not really help very much. Now, at this point, there's two ways to proceed with the rest of the patient's symptoms and the review of systems. We can either just list them, kind of all the positives and all the negatives clumped together, or, and I think this is the better way, we can kind of lump the symptoms together by differential diagnosis in our head, arguing for things that are kind of for and against each of those on the differential. So for example, in our patient, we could say, the review of systems is positive for shortness of breath, leg swelling, anxiety, and leg pain. It's negative for headache, fever, chills, diaphoresis, change of vision, chest pain, cough, rhinorrhea, or wheezing, etc. Now at this point, as a listening attending, it's just a big splatter to me. It's disorganized, it kind of lacks a hierarchy. I don't know what you're thinking is more important, the fact that the patient doesn't have diarrhea or doesn't have chest pain. And I just don't know where you're going with this patient. Now, for example, the other way we could do this is sort by a differential. So in my head, I'm thinking, I kind of think this patient might have CHF. So out loud, I'm going to say, the shortness of breath is associated with some worsening leg swelling bilaterally that's painful. The shortness of breath is worse at night. Sometimes she even wakes up gasping, and it's causing her to feel pretty anxious. Now in my head, I'm also thinking, well, maybe this could be her asthma. So out loud, I'm going to say, now she does have a history of asthma, but it's been well controlled in the past, and it usually resolves right away with albuterol, and she actually tried that, and it didn't help. And she's not really having any wheezing and, and no other symptoms of rhinorrhea, or itching, or cough. Now in my head, I'm also thinking, well, maybe this is ACS. So out loud, I'm going to say things that kind of go against that. She's not having any chest pain, diaphoresis, arm pain, or nausea. And under the category of pneumonia, I'm going to say, she's not having any fevers, productive cough, or body aches. And lastly for PE, her leg swelling is bilateral, and she has no history of clots, DVTs, or recent immobility. Now, as you're attending listening, this is organized. I know exactly what you think is most important, and I really know where you're going with this patient. Okay, now at this point, you might give a little additional social history, family history, interpret the vitals, and give a brief pertinent exam. But I'm going to skip over this to get on to what I think is the next most important part, the assessment and plan. So your medical decision making is made up of two portions, the assessment and the plan, which includes the treatment, workups, and initial disposition. Now to start off with the assessment, you're just going to go back through that differential that we talked about before, making sure you think of things that are common and that could kill the patient or be dangerous to them. And you're going to just argue to me kind of for and against those different things on the differential. Don't just list them. Remember, make a hierarchy and tell me what you think is likely and what we need to rule out. So I'm going to say, I'm concerned the patient's having a CHF exacerbation. It might be fluid overloaded. Now, she does have this history of asthma, but she's not really having any wheezing today, and the leg swelling still makes CHF more likely. She could be having an MI that's exacerbating the CHF, although she's not having any chest pain. But given her history, I really think we need to rule this out. And I don't really think this is consistent with pneumonia or pulmonary embolism. Now, remembering your HPI when you told me that symptoms that go against pneumonia and PE, well, I'm already convinced. At this point, you don't need to tell me anything further. I'm with you on this one. Okay, the first part of plan is the treatment. And here you should tell me what you want and why. So for example, in this patient, we could get oxygen, some Lasix for diuresis. We could try an albuterol nab and give an aspirin just in case she's having an MI. The second part is the workup. And here is the most important thing. Don't just list to me what you want to get. Tell me why you want to get it. So under labs, 
why do we want to get a BMP? To assess for fluid overload. I'd also like cardiac enzymes to rule out MI. It's okay to get a CBC and a BMP, but tell me why you want to get it. For example, in our patient, we could get a CBC to rule out anemia and signs of infection that could be causing shortness of breath. I think that's really reasonable. Let's do it. And lastly, you're going to say what imaging studies you want and maybe what consults you want to get. Lastly, you're going to give your impression of your initial disposition. Now, you might not know yet, but in that case, tell me what you think will help you decide. Do you want to reassess the patient? When? Um, what other treatments or tests might be helpful later on? So for example, in this patient, you might say, I'm not really sure if she's going to be going home yet today. So what I think we should do is repeat a lung exam and an O2 set after we diurese her a little bit. Good. I'm with you. That sounds like an excellent plan. Okay, let's review. For HPI, you're going to start off with that killer first line. Then add a sentence or two using the old carts mnemonic to describe that chief complaint a little further. And lastly, give me an organized list of the review of symptoms that split up by differential and lets me know what you're thinking about this patient. You'll have even less to say in your assessment and plan if you organize in this way. The medical decision making includes the assessment and the plan. For your assessment, make sure your differential includes things that are common and that could kill the patient or be dangerous. And argue for them. Tell me what you think is most likely and what we need to rule out. For your plan, include the treatment, workup, and initial disposition. And don't just tell me what, tell me why. Now this is a lot of information, so feel free to download this uh, template worksheet. And thanks for joining us on EMN5.